Hi ho wee way. Happy Monday, everybody. Excited for some stories. Uh yeah, back to full time schedule as usual. So let's get right into our first story. Oh, oh wait. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? Not working. Oh, here we go. Get ready for store one. I have the numb lock off. Uh, poll going up for the first story right now. And there you go. Off to the races. A with an early lead at Oprah prompt. We got Christopher Branson. Oh, someone even ended up with B. <laughs> Before our prompt has even been selected, we got a character redemption. Uh, no love for Tom. Is it going to be another dead heat with just two votes? Anyone can eBay steal. Anybody, anybody watching right now can sway in their favor if they like A or B better. Oh, ho, he, huh? Invisible Corey, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, I see him online. I see him playing Elden Ring. I think he is too sucked in. So maybe he's, uh, first the boss or something. No Love for Time, a murder mystery by Stephen King. Oh, interesting. Uh, A and B have tied. Uh, B is the older prompt. So Christopher Bredson wins the day. Uh, this is a prompt by... Uh, anime. Thank you, anime. Uh, you are Christopher Bredson, a guy who's been eating 20 sandwiches a day. Your friends think you should eat less sandwiches. You sigh and say, fine. You start eating 15 sandwiches a day. It's not easy for you, but you managed to do it. However, your friends still think you're eating too many sandwiches. This reminds me of uh, Review. There's an episode where he eats pancakes. And uh, it's very hard for him. And then, through an accident, he has to review eating more pancakes at the end of the episode. He's like, what? Uh, what's up, Rustbox? What's up, Biz? What's up, anime? Corey has 100 stealth, yeah. <laughs> okay. You continue with the sandwich a day diet until one day, while looking at a picture of Michael in the magazine, something happens. I swear to God, Michael is the new Count Gray. Uh, there are so many Michaels in this. You lose control. Suddenly. You don't care about eating any more sandwiches. You want to go on eating them forever. That's that is very co contradictory. You don't care about eating more sandwiches. You need to eat sandwiches. I don't care what people think. Oh, maybe maybe it's not. Maybe I don't care what people think about me eating all these sandwiches. I've lost control. <laughs> I think I think that makes sense. It, yes, it makes sense. Or maybe you stopped, but you want to continue. Oh, maybe. You consult your best friend, Lester. A guy who wets his pants whenever he drinks anything. Lester, what do I do? Lester is your best friend, even though he's always wetting himself. Always. He tells you that he doesn't understand what happened to you, since he was eating lots of sandwiches just like you were. Yeah, I think it's called enabling Lester. <laughs> you need to go to a back alley sandwich dealer.
you realize classic Lester. What's up, Globetrotter? You realize you don't want to turn out like Lester. And quit sandwiches, cold turkey. However, this gives you severe sandwich withdrawals. Your stomach growls and eggs all day long. You try to distract yourself by reading a book or playing video games, but nothing helps. Yeah, I think it's just a starvation. Finally, late at night, when everyone else is asleep, you sneak into the kitchen and steal an entire loaf of bread. Oh my god, I didn't even realize I was doing it. Lester has yeast bladder. That's why he keeps sweating himself. That's a very good explanation. Your wife catches you. And says. I thought you said this was over. Now, you need to get help. We stole, we stole our own bread, but we said we quit. So it's kind of like, you know, we have it in for the family. So make peanut butter sandwiches for the kids. It's not for us. Get arrested for self theft. She looks at you pityingly oh, and shit. asks, why did you have to ruin everything? <laughs> Oh, no. But I can't, you tell her. <laughs> the only thing that will stop my craving is another sandwich. Wow, okay, okay. I did those out of order, but I think it still has the same effect. You convince your wife that this is it. Your last sandwich ever. And after this, it is, it is really over for, hey, Prince, go cold turkey. Ha, <laughs> yeah, cold cut turkey's combo. She reluctantly agrees to let you finish the whole <laughs> loaf. As soon as you've finished, however. She puts the bread back in the fridge and locks it up. She doesn't trust us. Yeah, un understandable. You return to bed, but lie there awake for hours. Just dreaming about sandwiches. You have a magical, vivid dream about sandwiches. Addiction. Bread tumors. Oh, bread tremors. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got the DTs. We've got the... Uh, B Not the DTs. We've got the BLTs. <laughs> We're just like... Uh, blah, blah, blah. In your dream, you find yourself walking through the woods near your house. A strange feeling comes over you, so you look down at the ground around you. There, right in front of your eyes, are dozens of delicious looking sandwiches each one freshly made i love that that's what a dream 12 delicious fresh sandwiches all different all all amazing they are arranged neatly in rows separated from each other by small strips of paper each sandwich is covered with layers of cheese lettuce tomatoes onions bacon mustard mayo ketchup Pickles, ham, Whoa. roast beef, chicken breast, pork sausage, tuna fish, shrimp cocktail. <laughs> shrimp cocktail? Okay, I was all on board until it hit the fish part. <laughs> this is a meat mountain. This is a massive sub. Oh, I, I love that. 40 plus handcrafted sandwiches. Uh, 
Your wife has put the following extreme measures around the house to stop you. All in one sandwich, yeah. Dream over. Oh my god. One. The refrigerator door has been welded shut. Well, I mean, you could have just taken the food out. Now it's useless to everybody. That shit's gonna just rot in there. Two. A padlock has been installed on the pantry cupboard. You should have padlocked the fridge, too. Three. The <laughs> stove has been bolted to the floor. <laughs> you know, a perfect sandwich hiding spot is behind the stove. She's like, well, we're just gonna have to bolt to the floor. And we're like, damn it. Damn! What? For all the pots and pans have been removed from the cabinets and replaced with large wooden crates. I... Yeah, I don't understand. Five. Two heavy chains have been hung across the sink and oven. Oh, what? I can't use the sink or the oven? She's like, I know you only use it for oven roasting your subs. Six. A steel grate has been placed in the doorway leading into the dining room. <laughs> okay, just uh, so many barriers to entry. She's like, if she gets into the kitchen, okay, then he can't use any of the appliances. Two chains, yeah. She left nothing to chance, exactly. You know. Every stage an obstacle. Uh, six months later. Or uh, one year later, let's say. You have been sandwiched sober. And things seem to finally be going well in your life. Until you come home to find the following note on the table. Uh oh. Dear Mr. Bread's son, we regret having to take such drastic actions against our son Christopher, but we feel these steps must be taken immediately if he is to survive the rest of his life. What? But I'm, cr uh, I'm, what? You see the attached paperwork uh, is from your parents and they have cut you out of the will because of your addiction. Just when everything was going well. They have left the money to someone else. Sincerely yours. Mrs. Snow. Oh. P.S. We hope that this situation does not affect our relationship with you. Um, it definitely does. You don't trust me? What the fuck? Michael is furious. I turned my life around. I've been sandwich free for a year. It's Judge Justice again. <laughs> you are so mad and sad that your own parents... Think so lowly of you. Michael suggests going to going on a sandwich bender. Are we going to resist? You eat, you eat a mad witch, yeah. Afterwards. Michael and Mrs. Snow apologize for their behavior towards you and ask if they could borrow some money. You give them enough for the lawyer fees, which leaves you broke.
I give them the lawyer fees for them to write me out of the will? What a cuck. You decide to work for the Snow family to pay off the debt and hopefully make amends. All right, well, I don't know. Have 10 pints of sandwiches. Um, I guess if we're trying to maintain a relationship with our parents. You begin to resent. Mrs. Snow and Michael. Cuck with ya. Work off the debt that you got yourself into on purpose, yeah. I mean, I think I, I get it, yeah. To save face, but it's still bullshit. One day you overhear them discussing how much better it would be if Christopher had died instead. Ooh! You know, yeah, it probably would have been better off if I had just died and not lived in an entire life. And, you know, if I wasn't such a burden because of my sandwich problem. This makes you very angry and you decide to run away. <laughs> You're a crow man, Christopher Branson. You pack a bag full of food and head north into the mountains. <laughs> no sandwiches, but we did pack food. You realize living in the mountains is not as easy as you thought it would be, but you are making it work. And the best part is you are far from temptation. Far from sandwich temptation. This is a Netflix series I'd watch. Yeah, I, I think it'd be really interesting if someone was like cripplingly addicted to sandwiches and had to really change their entire life to f avoid them. Eventually, you become tired of being alone and decide to head south again. Oh, no. You spend a lot of time wandering aimlessly before finding yourself in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> wow, wow. Therapy is only eating tacos. Yeah, replace your addiction with something else. Sail to the Sandwich Islands. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you wonder where you should go next and end up in New York City. Oh. There you see uh, an ad in a travel agency. For the Sandwich Islands. You sell everything you have to afford the ticket. Uh, you sell everything you have and buy a one-way ticket. The mountains were boring. Boston is where it's at, though. I like Boston. I've only been once, but it was nice. I was surprised they had, like, a decent public transit. I was like, oh, okay. It's not... I'm just always surprised when people have, like, rail and, it's like, stations and stuff. Like, Upon arrival, you learn that Hawaii was actually named the Sandwich Islands. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Oh, Hawaii, a double win. I just went here because of sandwiches. A few months pass and you decide to explore the area. You visit the volcano, the beach, and the rainforest. Mm -hmm. The beach, the rainforest. Yeah, I, I, I love this, yeah. You live the rest of your days there as a sandwich free beach bum
Whoa. One day you meet a woman with green skin and bright blue hair. You talk to her about your green life skin? and she tells you that you're a sandwich addict. <laughs> okay, we meet like a World of Warcraft uh, cosplayer, troll cosplayer. Don't worry, you'll get over it eventually. <laughs> Thanks, lady. Okay. I was telling you because I thought it was an interesting story. I didn't ask for your advice, okay? I I handled it, okay? Uh, I think that's a good place to end for that. Wow. A surprisingly nice ending for... I mean, he kind of had to cut off all of relationships, but he did what was right for him. He didn't need his family's money. All he needed was a one-way ticket to the Sandwich Islands, which turned out to be Hawaii, so... <laughs> Where were you five years ago? Yeah. Oh, man. I, oh, I'll just get over it. Thanks. Yeah, maybe I can go back in time and tell myself that. All right. Moving on to story two. You might find yourself reading story two and ask yourself, how did I get here? Paul going on a, on a, on a Tuesday, on a when, it's a Monday, shit, I don't know why I said, going up on a Tuesday, and Paul is up. Hey, what's up, Misha? Yeah, you missed story one, it's okay, though. Oh, or A taking an early lead with two. People want to see Oprah. Uh, Misha, our first story was about uh, a man with a sandwich addiction. And, uh, you know, he uh, destroys all the relationships in his life. Because of his sandwich addiction, he dreams about sandwiches, uh, but uh, then he buys a ticket to the Sandwich Islands and uh, lives there ha happily ever after. That's pretty much, that's a pretty good summary. Oh, uh, I think it's going to be A. Yep, here we go. This prompt is by Misha. Thank you, Misha. Just in time for your prompt. Uh, you are Oprah Winfrey. You are really sad that Jason didn't invite you to his and Ellen's wedding. No one was invited, Oprah. You thought that since you worked at AIPD for a couple of years that you and Jason's friendship was enough to be invited to his wedding ceremony. But alas, you were wrong. It was a nice wholesome story, Misha. Yeah. Oprah then remembers the time she went on her first date with Jason. Whoa! Oprah had to make him feel better about himself because he felt like an ugly duckling. He was very insecure and worried if people would like him or not. Kind of true. And then Oprah entered my life. You decide to be straight with Jason and let him know that you were hurt when you did not receive a wedding invite. So you and Tony had both dated Oprah. I guess so. After all, it's your job to help people. Sexual tension. Jason in the is surprised to hear this news and asks how the wedding will go without you there. It'll be fun, you say reassuringly. I'm very tricky with Oprah. I'm like, I'm spinning it on her. I'm like, I, I don't know how we're going to survive without you there, Oprah. Well, no, it'll be fine. And then we're like, what the. We just got duck season, rabbit season by Jason. We were mad at you. How, you. how did you flip this back on us? Uh, 
Uh, in secret, you find, uh, you hire a private detective to find out where the wedding is being held so you can crash it. Yeah, you don't invite Oprah Winfrey? Well, I got a plane. I've got helicopters. I could be anywhere, anytime because I'm Oprah. I'm rich enough. Your plan is working perfectly. The private detective tells you that they're having the wedding on a cruise ship in international waters. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. International waters, Oprah. You don't want to go get kidnapped, do you? If only you could get down there undetected and see for yourself. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's how you want to do it, <laughs> anime. When we're trying to be incognito, let's just dress up as the person we're trying to find. <laughs> and then they'll be like, oh, Jason, hey, aren't you supposed to be on that cruise ship? And we're like, thanks for telling us exactly where we need to be. You know what? I poo-pooed it at first, but now that's actually not too bad of an idea. You go undercover. And dress up in Jason from AIPD's clothes. Hey, aren't you supposed to be getting married? You walk into the bathroom and change into him. You put on Jason's hair gel, A which grease. makes you look like Jason. It's just grease. You put on his glasses. Kiss me. Then you take oh. off the trench coat and put on a tuxedo. <laughs> a trench coat. Oh, man, we really are. This is like a, a hitman scenario. You realize the wedding organizers, you realize your disguise is Oprah technically in white face. Oh, yeah, I think so. You realize your uh, disguise is so good. The wedding organizers actually confuse you. Uh, actually think you are the real Jason and place you at the altar, at the wedding altar. Ellen appears and you lean in for a kiss. Ellen's gonna steal my girl. Or Oprah's gonna steal my girl. You start kissing her and you both begin to feel guilty. <laughs> you look like a new person today, yeah. Why are we doing this, you ask? Oh no! Because we love each other, she replies. We should do it now before the ceremony. Whoa! Ellen whisks you away to a nearby broom closet. And you... Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> yep. To have sex. Yep. Mm -hmm. But you just wanted to make sure the wedding party knew what a great guy Jason really is. <laughs> you then leave the broom closet and continue to the wedding reception. After the wedding, you tell Jason that he didn't need to worry. Oh, unless you've been Oprah the whole time. <laughs> Oh, my God. He and Ellen are perfect together. Oh, thanks, Oprah. He's very happy and says so. How did you get here? After everyone leaves, you and Jason go back to the honeymoon cabin aboard the cruise ship. Oh, my God. This is like... Uh, <laughs> this is this is like Rocky Horror where you just do, go into both. You and Jason fall asleep in each other's arms. Damn, Oprah. You are just... Uh... This is ridiculous.
Alan notices you in bed with her new husband and begins to freak out. You, uh, you confess to her about the whole thing. And all it took was a premarital affair to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't care that you had sex with Jason and that you're wearing his clothing. All she cares about is that you guys are together. You kiss her passionately. <laughs> Three way! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. Yeah, and also... Oprah got into bed, but she was still dressed as me. So what does that say about me? I'm willing to have sex with myself? I, I don't know. What? The next morning, you wake up alone. Uh-oh. Uh, you give Jason a wedding present. A uh, grenade launcher. Chekhov's grenade launcher. <laughs> For the future, you say. <laughs> That's a ominous. You then leave him and say goodbye. I think Navel AI has confused you for Lisa Shoot Larry? I think so as well. You take a cab back to your apartment and take a shower. We take a cab from a cruise ship? I mean, I guess if they, you're docked, I don't know. Uh, you then see a breaking news story. Jason has used his grenade launcher to dot 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 no shoot and kill Ellen no there's also a picture of you in a police station no a reporter says police believe the murderer might still be on the loose they urge anyone who spots the killer to contact the nearest authorities immediately <laughs> Jason's like, I thought it was a bottle opener. I, I didn't think it was an actual grenade launcher. I thought it was like a bath bomb. I didn't think it was a grenade launcher. It's an on-deck cab service. I wonder if they have those. Like a rickshaw or something. Because those, those ships are huge. So, it would actually serve some sort of purpose. But then again, you'd be fucking causing havoc on the ship by riding a bike or a rickshaw all over the place. You'd be like, hey. Breaking news, the infamous birthday hater just murdered his new wife. Wait, which Jason are they looking for? Oh, I don't know. Jason... Appears in handcuffs and gives a speech. I've been planning for this day my entire life. What? I want to thank Oprah Winfrey, without whom this wouldn't have been possible. It's like sarcastic. It was you who made me feel good about myself, and it was thanks to you that I met Ellen. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I think we're just trying to trick her into coming out of hiding. Come on, Oprah. I want you. Thank you for everything, Oprah. I don't think I would have had such a wonderful wife without you. Whoa! Goodbye. And then he shoots himself. Whoa! Oprah is devastated. She cries as she reads the article. What the... What? What? What in the fuck? What the fuck? Why? <laughs> what? Uh, you do a show 
in memorial of Jason and Alan. The episode is all about grenade launchers. How great they were. Ah, you end okay, the episode I... by saying, I'm sorry, Ellen and Jason, right. and thank you for coming on the show today. What? I hope you rest in peace. She rolls the coffin, our coffins onto the main stage. It's like, how did you get these, Oprah? What the fuck? Oprah then takes a long pause and looks directly to camera. Oh, no. What is this? To those reading this, Watching I this. apologize that I couldn't stop Jason from killing Ellen. What? But I will say that I am proud of the work that I've done and that I tried my best. Jason's brother stands up from the studio audience and tells everyone that you killed them and uh, shows a receipt uh, for the grenade launcher. Signed, Oprah Winfrey. The audience gasps and begins to boo you. Oh, hey, German D. Thank you, Misha. Oop. It's been a while since we heard German D. When a helicopter lands on Stage in Amman from AIPD takes you away in handcuffs. Aha! Corey and Tony come to the rescue finally. They knew. You are Oprah Winfrey. You are really sad that Jason didn't invite you to his and Ellen's wedding. Wow, yeah. You sit in the AIPD jail facility awaiting trial. You are interrogated by Officer Corey and Officer Tony. Genius plan to buy Jason the grenade launcher knowing he'll confuse it for a confetti cannon. Yeah, and point it right at Ellen. What do you mean? Oh my God. Who said that? Says Officer Tony. <laughs> what? what? Oh, I'm already doing that. Hold on. Did you know those confetti cannons are pretty much like mini grenade launchers? Like people have been like killed by them. Uh, and same with yeah, like uh, uh, you know, gender reveal party stuff. Yeah, it's just like people try to make their own, and then they just end up making dynamite or C4 and stuff. It's just like, oh my god, you've just made like a nail grenade. <laughs> with baby blue pellets or whatever they ask you why you murdered jason and ellen they are trying to get you to confess yes you answer that you are innocent and that you never meant for this to happen yeah officer cory says what kind of evidence are you referring to We have several pieces of video footage showing you murdering Jason and Ellen. Deepak, Deepak! We have a confession from you. What? Deepak! That's not true. You reply. Deepak! Cory Laus. Oh, come on, Oprah. You realize that before Jason shot himself, he created an AI generated. Uh, deep fake of you confessing and performing the murders. It's all coming back. Look, Oprah, says Corey, 
you have no one to blame but yourself. If you hadn't been sleeping with Jason, he wouldn't have gone crazy and murdered Ellen. Oh my god. You are so stupid, Oprah. You confess. Yes, I did it. I In killed Jason and Ellen. In I'm sorry. <laughs> you did do it, Oprah. But why? Asks Tony. You shrug. I wanted to be loved. I told Jason that if he liked me, I'd help him with his career. All right, Oprah Weinstein. You're coming with us. Plot twist. Alan was behind the whole thing. Oops. All right, moving on to the last story of the night. It's the last story of the night. Story three. All coming up right soon here. Uh, poll going up right now. That's crazy. She slept with both of us and then she made us kill ourselves. Oh, see off to our early lead. People want Stephen King. Uh, still anybody's game, though. I could bl I could see Oprah doing something like that, though. Just falling madly in love with someone who's like in a relationship and that person going like, listen, I know you're Oprah and I just don't feel the same way. And her just losing her damn mind. Just becoming so obsessed. She's like, I am so spoiled. I've gotten everything I've wanted. Doesn't Oprah love Stedman? I don't know. It's, it's a little bit weird that they haven't been married, right? They're not married. There, it, Stedman's just her partner. I, I don't get it. I just, uh, I guess common law married, right? Or something. She's been with him forever, so. Just imagine how shitty Stedman feels. He's like, man, we've been together forever. You still don't want to marry my ass? I mean, I know I'm not you, but God damn. Uh, C has won. This prompt is by uh, Biz. Thank you, Biz. Uh, one second here. You are Tom. You wake from a deep sleep to discover you're late for work. You throw on some clothes and open the door only to see dot dot dot. Maybe Oprah doesn't believe in marriage, so she's just cohabiting. Yeah, maybe. I guess I shouldn't pressure, yeah, put the pressure on her. It's just kind of like, to not even give her a reason. I guess I don't deserve a reason, and Oprah doesn't have to give one, but still weird. Still a little weird. No! Okay, we're, I, uh... Michael standing there. Michael? Michael? Yes, he replies with an exhausted sigh. He's wearing his white suit again today, looking like an angelic apparition out of one of those Renaissance paintings in which all the figures wear robes or white eunuchs and have long hair and beards. <laughs> okay. All right. If that second part wasn't so good, why? Why is Uterpy the rise of Michaels? Why are there so many damn Michaels in this universe? You don't believe what you are seeing. And you reach out to see if Michael is real. He is. Michael tells you that you are the chosen one. 
Hello, Michael. You're the chosen. Uh, hello, Tom. You're the chosen one. I'm Michael. I almost said, Michael, you're the chosen one. But then that would have made you think that I'm gloating about being the chosen one. Ha! <laughs> Silly me. Then, after a few minutes, Michael leaves you alone. You look around at your surroundings. The library seems to have been transformed overnight into a medieval fortress complete with drawbridges. A large double door leads east. Whoa! Whoa. We've time traveled or something? What the hell? You look through the history books and realize that you are in the middle of a kingdom uh, under siege by you're in a white castle yeah an evil king you wonder how much time has passed since you fell asleep last night you were so tired yesterday it must have been at least two days. Okay. But where are you? There doesn't seem to be any way to leave this place, not without going through the doors. Okay. We can't use doors. We've got a door phobia. Uh, you have an extreme phobia of large wooden doors. And the, they appear to be the only exit. You get up and wander aimlessly around the library for hours until it suddenly strikes you as funny that you should find yourself here. You laugh at the absurdity of it all. After all, you've never even heard of this place before. <laughs> I've never even heard of a place that has a lot of books like this. Normally when I see a lot of books, I just think, what a hoarder. But they, they have one and it's supported by our tax money. Weird. You hide. Uh... You hide in the library until everyone leaves. And then you plot your escape. You see a large stained glass window and break it open by throwing the book the king's ransom through it the glass shatters but there is no alarm you sneak out and make your way back home as you walk down the street you think about your dream and what it could mean Your escape because you stayed until the library was closed. Yeah. I can't go through the doors and they're going to, they're going to force me to leave through those doors if I had not hidden. You then accidentally bump into the evil king. You need to meet Michael. Maybe. He looks at you angrily and says, Why do you always interrupt my important meetings? Uh, what? I'm sure I told you once before, stay away from me. <laughs> you run off to safety, laughing hysterically at the absurdity of it all. You notice the evil king. Sitting on a bench, plotting something, and decide to play a prank on him.
Well, you're a lot less evil than I thought up close. You're kind of just like a big doofus. You approach him and say, Oh, I thought I recognized you. You are the evil king from the storybooks. I am the evil king. He screams. You tell him your name and explain how you found your way into his castle. You keep saying he looks like the evil king. And the evil king goes red in the face, saying, yelling, I am the evil king. Suddenly he gets up and starts chasing you around town. Sounds about right. It's like one of those hidden camera shows. You run into a bar and lock yourself inside. You realize that the evil king is coming closer and closer and you try to come up with a plan. Uh, you tell everyone in the bar that the first person to cover the evil king in beer gets a hundred gold pieces. The evil king enters the bar and is pelted with an ocean of ale. Everyone cheers when he falls over. <laughs> the evil king laughs and gives everyone 100 gold pieces each. Wow, okay. Oh, maybe he's not so evil after all. He seems to have a good uh, sense of humor about this. Everyone applauds and congratulates you for your good deed. You go back to your apartment. As you enter the door, you hear the sound of heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. The evil king barges in. Uh, the evil king barges into your doorless apartment. Aha. Uh -huh. What did you do that for? He, he was cries. He was not okay with it, but he is a politician and he knows to save face. But he really his feelings are hurt. You answer, because I can. Yeah, because I'm nobody and you're somebody and I hate that, so fuck you. You tell the evil king that you would love to see more of him. <laughs> After a few weeks, you're starting to feel pretty comfortable around the castle. Yep. The evil king has made you his personal court jester. And to get back at you, he places you in an arena with only... Large wooden doors. This is your worst nightmare. You stand nervously outside the entrance, waiting for the next match. You glance around and realize that you are trapped in an endless labyrinth of doors. This is cruel. Eventually the doors start opening and closing and you realize that the doors are controlled <laughs> by people. Thunder door! Two doors enter, one door leaves, yes. <laughs> Evil King runs bar to town. E Evil King runs bar door down. Evil King runs barn door town. I don't know. One of those is good. After 
several hours of severe panicking. The evil king goes you the way out and says that's for the beer shower now we are even uh, doors are controlled by people mind blown yeah every every hinge has tiny little people that are opening and closing the door at all times the evil king asks you if you want to spend the night together. You agree and head to his room. When you arrive, the evil king is already undressed. You stare at his body hungrily. What? This AI is getting horny. I guess this is like, um, you know, uh, in school when you'd like a girl and uh, you don't know how to convey that so you're just like hey you look stupid and you're like why did i say that i really like it it's like yeah it's like helga and uh hey arnold move it football head oh my god why i'm so in love he's a sandwich yeah <laughs> yeah you stare at the evil king and all you see is a delicious looking sandwich lying in bed you decide to take a nibble you take a big bite <laughs> you scream what is this you spit out the sandwich onto the floor the evil king quickly picks it up and eats it himself what, what, what? you ask why did you give me that disgusting sandwich? <laughs> well, I mean, we're all thinking that, yeah, Misha, uh, yeah, that wasn't a sandwich. That was my penis. <laughs> uh, I forgot to say it. You realize that you just ate the evil king's cock. Oh my god. You also realize that you will die very soon unless you find a cure. <laughs> you look around desperately hoping to find a solution. Suddenly you spot the magic mirror. Yep. You say... Mirror, mirror. On the wall. What is the cure all oh, for poison balls? <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. What is the cure all for poison cock and balls? There you go. It's got a rhyme, right? That's one of the mirror tricks, right? A handsome man appears in the mirror. He is dressed in a tuxedo and has curly blonde hair and a sexy mustache. His voice is deep and soothing. Hello there, I am the magic mirror. We can't sleep with the mirror guy, right? We can't sleep with mirror mirror. What is your request? Mustache, yeah. I need a potion to heal my poisoned cock and balls. Oh, the magic mirror makes a strong noise and disappears. I really love this AI. You begin to worry because you're afraid the magic mirror won't be able to help you. Moments later, a potion appears in front of you. You drink it all, and then... Dot, dot, dot. Pass out. You wake up to the smell of fresh bread. <laughs> you open your eyes to see the magic mirror again. Hello there, I am the magic mirror. What is your request? You ask... What was that potion 
I drunk last night. What does it do? I hope it's secure. You realize that you are in a completely different place than the last time you were here. Oh. You look around and realize that you are in a palace. You realize that you are in the magic mirror's realm. Oh my god, the magic mirror! He did it! He he made us drink a potion to think we were curing our poison cock and balls, and he really just transported us to the mirror dimension. The magic mirror appears before you in the flesh and winks at you. You know what that means. Dot dot dot. You ask the magic mirror, how can I return to the world of the living? Do you have any ideas? The magic mirror replies, no, but I let you in on a little secret. The way to get back to life is to eat the heart of the one. Whoa, 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 the one what? Who killed you? If you ever meet the person that killed you, kill them in their heart and you shall live forever. You are shocked at this information and the magic mirror explains further. Okay, yeah, please explain more. So, I'm supposed to kill you? Because I drank your potion and it, I, then I'm here, so. You must travel to a land called Earth where a powerful wizard named Michael lives. No more Michaels. He has the power to bring you back to life and to defeat the one who murdered you. You thank the magic mirror for all of the information and promise to follow his advice. Yep. You kiss the magic mirror. Uh, uh, an STD. You don't want him to have anything to do with you after all. You leave the magic mirror's realm and make your way to a nearby forest. There you find a cave. What's in the cave? You decide to hide in the cave until you have a better idea of what to do. Uh, the moral of the story. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> Don't fuck the magic mirror. <laughs> oh, God. All right, and then we're lost in the woods. Okay, okay. Don't fuck the magic mirror. With that, that's a good place to end. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you Wednesday. Tell your friends. Follow. Join the Discord, submit your prompts. Bye, ho, wee, wee, everybody. See you Wednesday. Have a good midweek, early to midweek, and see you on Wednesday. Bye.